Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. After I reviewed the Muppet Christmas Carol yesterday, I decided to review an animated short from Disney that came out in 1983, which is now celebrating its 35th anniversary. On top of that, it's also celebrating its 90th anniversary of the appearance of Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. Really works. <laughs> I'm going to review Mickey's Christmas Carol, which is based on the adaptation of a Charles Dickens novel, A Christmas Carol. With Alan Young doing the voice of Ebenezer Scrooge, yeah, Scrooge McDuck himself, who is a tremendous actor. <clears throat> He's been known for playing the role of Wilbur in the TV show Mr. Ed, as well as appearing in films such as The Time Machine and several others. I mean, he's definitely a legend, and he definitely lived this long to do the voice of Scrooge McDuck that became so popular ever since when he wants up on the TV series DuckTales that came out in 1987. Yep, the richest duck in Duckburg. <laughs> yeah. But, of course, he was also voiced ever since uh, the musical album, so he's, he was known for playing that. But, nevertheless, he's definitely Scrooge. And, um, he also had a chance to do the voice in the video game a long time ago, and he sure got it. Yeah, but sadly, he passed away in 2016. He sure lived a long life though. Always be remembered. And also has all the other Disney characters joining in. Like you got Mickey Mouse as Bob Cratchit, Goofy as uh, Jacob Marley, the ghost. You got Jiminy Cricket from Pinocchio to play the ghost of Christmas Past. Willie the Giant as uh, the ghost of Christmas Present. And Pete yeah, he's always been the villain, playing the Ghost of Christmas Future. You also got Donald Duck, who was uh, voiced by the original voice actor, Clarence Nash, you know, before Tony Elsembo took over. This was actually his final appearance to do the voice. As you can pretty much tell how uh, a little raspy on his voice, but he still got it you know, before his death. You also got Daisy Duck, uh, Jay Fattest Toad, Minnie Mouse with Millie or Melody Mouse, Morty and Ferdy Field Mouse, Ratty, Moldy, Otto, Weasels. You even got Huey, Dewey, and Louie to join in with Chip and Dale, the Three Little Pigs, uh, Uncle Waldo, Grandma Duck, all the rest, all together. <laughs> so this is really something. And very special too. Interesting enough, this was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Animated Short Film. But it actually lost to uh, Sunday in New York, a four minute shorts, in 1984. But it's been nominated for a long time since the short Mickey and the Seal from 1948. And, it's, and I really wish it had one. It would have been quite special. Interesting enough, um, it had beautiful anim... And yes, this movie definitely... And yes, this special had stunningly beautifully animation that they put into it. And one of the animators turned out to be, you guessed it, John Lasseter. He's been known for working for Pixar, as well as Lucasfilm Limited and Walt Disney Animation Studio. <clears throat> so he's now the head of, of the company. So it's really cool. So it did get criticized um, when it came out. Surprisingly, it got positive feedback when it was released as a double feature with the re-release of uh, The Rescuers from 1977. Uh, luckily, Leonard Moulton um, said it was a pale attempt to imitate the past, but 
It said it was cleverly written, well staged, and animated with real spirits and a sense of fun. So, there you go. I do agree with him. Um, however, Cisco and Ebert, who are on the, the TV series At the Movies, the syndicated program from Tribune, before they went to Disney, they were both disappointed. They gave it a negative review, saying that there was not enough emphasis on Mickey's character, despite the title, did not rank with most of the feature-length animated features. He, on top of that, Ebert um, said that he lacked the magic or the visual animation that Disney people were famous for. And it was a forced march through the Charles Dickens story without any ironic sign. They seem like they're the only ones that they just couldn't get. And I just feel like, I'm sorry. You know, I do respect Cisco and Eber for what they do, and I respect their criticism, but, and I do love these guys. I mean, sadly, they're no longer with us. I mean, I always uh, complain about what critics have to say, even though I do respect their opinions, or sometimes I, I disagree, or I do agree. I mean, maybe always, I don't know. Yeah, I'm always ahead of myself. But I definitely disagree with them on this review. I'm sorry. Um, they just don't seem to get it. They really don't. I, I wish, you know, they had looked back at it a long time ago, you know, when they were still alive, to appreciate it more. Because I gotta say, their review was a big mistake. A big mistake. So, yeah. Now, the special is on Blu-ray, along with DVD. It has been on DVD um, since the 2000s, but it's been on home video. I actually uh, did got it on home video when I first saw it, and I really love it. I used to have the book, too. Actually, I still have the book, and I do have the other book which is a tiny version of the the actual book that was from Little Golden Book. Um, it was very special. I always loved reading the book and I always loved watching the short. It's just wonderful. Definitely the perfect time for Christmas. Yeah. I do have a copy uh, from the DVD. Uh, the only thing that's disappointing on the new Blu-ray release uh, from 2013 was that they cropped the film not exactly the way it was supposed to be and on top of that they were totally heavy with DNR, the yeah, digital noise reduction. So this is not the best transfer they ever got, which is such a shame. You know, Disney's been known for remastering a lot of classes and they definitely do a wonderful job with it. But they're just not doing a wonderful job this time. And this happened the same problem with the Sword of Stone. So, take your pick. I mean, if you want to get the Blu-ray with the shorts included, then fine by me. But it's definitely not going to look as good as all the previous uh, DVDs or even home video for that matter. <clears throat> so that's a shame. It really deserves a better remaster and a better print. And hopefully they will learn their mistakes someday. But what can you do? So anyway, let, let's get to it. It stars Alan Young, Scrooge McDuck, playing Ebenezer Scrooge, Wayne Allwine, Mickey Mouse, playing Bob Cratchit, Hal Smith, as Goofy, playing Jacob Marley, Eddie Carroll, Jiminy Cricket, playing the Ghost of Christmas Pass, yeah, Will, Will Ryan doing Willie the Giant and Pete, playing both Ghosts of Christmas Present and Ghosts of Christmas Future, Clarence Nash um, as Donald Duck playing Fred, Scrooge's nephew. Uh, Patricia Paris as Daisy Duck playing Isabel, the love interest of Scrooge. Also has uh, also has Jay Fredis Toad, Minnie Mouse, Millie or Melody Mouse, Morty and Ferdy Phil Mouse. All playing Fezziwig, Emily Critchett, uh, Morpha Critchett, Peter Critchett, and Tiny Tim. 
Dick Billingsley um, does the voice of Morty and Footy, Footy Field Mouse. Hal Smith does uh, Ratty and Moldy, with Will Ryan doing Moldy as well as Collectors of the Polar. And also we have Otto and Riesel as Biggers and Grave Diggers. And it's produced and directed by Bernie Madison. The special begins set in 19th century London on Christmas Eve. That's where we meet Ebenezer Scrooge. Yeah, Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> That's voiced by Alan Young. Is definitely what he is. The meanest miser in town. But he's a surely money lender. Does not share any of the merriment of Christmas at all. Top of that, he declines his nephew Fred, Donald Duck, his invitation to a wonderful Christmas feast. He also brought shop the two gentlemen who are money collectors, yeah, who are Rat and Mole from the Wind and the Willows, yeah, of Disney, doing a fundraising aid for the poor. And on top of that, uh, he works with his loyal employee named Bob Cratchit, who's, of course, Mickey Mouse. And he decided to have a request to actually have a, a half day off uh, during Christmas, which, reluctantly, Scrooge agrees. But Cratchit would be dock on half a day pay. <laughs> and yes, even when Fred uh, came along with the Christmas wreath at the door, <laughs> You know, he just uh, says, Merry Christmas! <laughs> and then Scrooge just says, And a ball humbug to you! <laughs> okay. So, Scrooge continues his business um, until he goes home just before midnight. And in his house, he suddenly uh, enters the door, and that's where he spots Marley, you know, Goofy. This is where he screams, Scrooge! <laughs> he just touches his nose. So he enters uh, the house, and then he begins to see a shadowy figure of what seems to be Marley. So he finally uh, spotted him just when <laughs> he slipped out of Scrooge's cane. <laughs> yeah, because he's goofy. Anyway, um... So Jacob Marley, his deceased business partner, who passed away for seven years, warns him that he's condemned in the afterlife, that he's going to face the same problem that Scrooge is going to be going through. So this is where he informs him that he's going to be visited by free ghosts, so that way he'll change his ways during Christmas. And so... First, the ghost of Christmas past is Jiminy Cricket, who takes him back in time to his early life as they visit to his time as an employee, you know, working with Fezziwig, Mr. Toad. So, Fezziwig was throwing a Christmas party with the rest of the guests joining in, and that's when Scrooge met a young woman named Isabel, Daisy Duck. Suddenly falls in love with him. Uh, Especially with that moment where <laughs> she was about to kiss him underneath the mistletoe, but actually steps on <laughs> his webbed feet. And then they started dancing the night away with the rest of the game, the entire band. Um, he also spot all the characters joining in. So, like Chip and Dale, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and Three Little Pigs, and all the rest. <laughs> So they also, um, they're about to have a honeymoon together, but then 10 years later, because during the marriage and everything, she, he begins to focus more on making money, starting to become very rich. Isabel remarks that she's been paying the mortgage on the cottage just for the honeymoon, but this is where he forecloses, uh, the entire uh, cottage. So now, this is where he's out of love. 
Yeah, such a shame. And because of that, he lost Isabel forever. Knowing that this was one of Scrooge's big mistakes. But he has made so. Next, he meets a gigantic Merry Ghost of Christmas present. Yeah, Willie the Giant, as we speak. And Scrooge and the ghosts were visiting uh, Bob Critchett's house. Yeah, because Willie the Giant actually has a whole lot of food. Yeah, the, all that Christmas dinner that he got. So that's really cool. He just enters by actually taking out the, the street pole. Yeah, the street light. And just use it as a flashlight. And just going around searching all the houses. <laughs> so it makes it to Bob Critchett's house. And this is where we get to see him and his family. Yeah, his wife, uh, Mary, played by Minnie Mouse. Then you have all the kids joining in, including Tiny Tim. Yeah, who's Morty Mouse. Who's uh, fallen very ill due to a, um, a rare disease. So he's only in his crutches with a cap on, hoping that maybe he might survive or, or not, which... This is what leads to at the end when um, we get to meet uh, the Ghost of Christmas Future, yeah, Pete. Started out as silent, but then he starts to speak and just smoking a cigar. That's when we get to see the cemetery that uh, the ghost takes him to, where he was shocked to find out that Tiny Tim did pass away, only left with with uh, Mickey along with Minnie and yes yeah, as Bob Critchett and Mary and kids all left alone very sad that they lost Tiny Tim so then there's another grave yeah where the grave diggers were dicking up yeah those uh, weasels and that's when he spotted his own grave yeah that says R.I.P. We have rest in peace, Ebenezer Scrooge, and that's when he suddenly fell all the way down into the hole of his grave. Just when uh, the entire uh, coffin is on fire, yeah, because Pete actually lights it up and drops it down there, and then uh, Scrooge was about to hang on to the vine, and then suddenly he fell all the way down, saying he'll change. But he does when he finally woke up to know that it's Christmas morning and he hasn't missed it. So he finally <laughs> goes around dressed up while wearing his uh, robe and just wears his top hat and, and cane. So he just <laughs> goes around and finally gives uh, the, the money collectors all the money that they want to collect to the poor. And then just greeting everyone, saying... Merry Christmas, and then finally spotted um, his nephew Fred, yeah, while just uh, riding on, on a horse carrier. And actually, uh, Scrooge makes a request to finally uh, get to have dinner um, with the guests. Um, so he decided to go there after all, later on. Um, but not only that, but also tried to go to a toy store to buy all the toys and all the gifts at other places even brought in the turkey to join in to give to um, you know Bob Cratchit and his family so that way they'll have a wonderful Christmas together and they did so when Scrooge finally enters this is where you know they they're about to celebrate they bought all the toys inside the bag they got the turkey and they greet each other, and then Scrooge just sits down in a rocking chair with Tiny Tim, saying the last line, as it is on all Charles Dickens' uh, novels, God blesses everyone. There you go. Yeah. And this um, adaptation definitely brought a tear in my eye. It really did when I first saw this. And I really loved it ever since I was a kid. And I never get tired of watching that uh, every Christmas. Um, and it's 
really special. I, I love watching all the, the, the Disney characters uh, joining in for this special. And it really works so well. But you got to get it all to Alan Young because he's definitely the real star of this. And he was very good. I mean, it's no wonder why he became so popular with uh, Scrooge McDuck, the character. Because, I mean, no matter what he... No matter what he does, he always changes ways. And it was great to see Mickey Mouse, Goofy, Jiminy Cricket, Willie the Giant, Pete, Donald Duck, Minnie Mouse, Daisy Duck, um, and all the rest of the characters. So, um, they, they, they all were together here. And it really shows that, yes, Scrooge finally gets a change of heart, that being greedy is is always a bad thing. But in the end, you know, no matter what, he'll always be, you know, the richest guy ever. And definitely be able to help everyone else uh, after what, what was going on. And on top of that, uh, he now becomes, uh, he now works with Bob Critchett as his partner after uh, Marley. So they'll always be remembered no matter what. I also loved the opening and the end credits where everything was all sepia tone. Yeah, it, it even shows the characters, you know, scene after scene. So that was very special. Plus, it even has uh, the song, yeah, for Christmas. Yeah, where they actually sing "Merry Merry Christmas." Merry Merry Christmas. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, but anyway, uh, check this out. Um, buy the Blu ray if you must, just to take the risk. But, but at this rate, um, also get the DVD, which I would recommend getting the old DVD just to see the, the special the way it was meant to be without any of the DNR enhancements and all that. But anyway, it's it's wonderful, so you'll never forget. So anyway, I give Mickey's Christmas Carol five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.